All right, welcome back. This is video three, finding the anaerobic threshold for the GXT lab, uh, Robert Lewis's lab. So here we go. We are gonna go right back to the instruction sheet. And for the instruction sheet, we have completed in the last video, method 2A, the first criterion, you put, uh, we decided that it was 3.35 liters of O2, and now we're gonna go to the second criterion. All right, so what do we need to do for the second criterion? First thing, plot VE, VO2, and VE, VCO2 on one graph, okay? So let's go ahead and do that first. Let's go back to where we were. Let's put this over to the side here. If we can, let me zoom out a bit. And we'll put it right over here. Okay, zoom back in. All right, so we want to highlight the rows that we want. So we know we want VEVO2 and VEVCO2. Okay, so again, just control, highlight all the, what is that? All right, control and highlight all the cells that you want, VEVO2. We'll do the same with VEVCO2. And rather than have them related to time, we're actually gonna do related to VO2 so that when we uh, find the break point that we're looking for, we can determine what the VO2 was at that point in time, okay? So you have VEVO2, VEVCO2, and VO2 highlighted in your columns. Go ahead and go up to insert, scatter, and select that first option. Now, it's a little bit screwy. So obviously I must have done something uh, goofy. So let's try it again. Highlight VO2, VCO, uh, VEVO2, VEVCO2. Let's go to insert, scatter, click that, and that's more like it, okay? Uh, first thing we wanna do is we want to create two Y axes, okay? Um, why we want to do that is because we want to have the left correspond to either VEVO2 uh, or the uh, VEVCO2 and then the right uh, correspond to the other, okay? So what we want to do is go ahead and click on the data points. It doesn't matter whether the blue ones or the red ones are your data points and they're conveniently already identified. So the blue ones are VEVO2. I'm going to right click and we're going to, going to go to, let's see, Format Data Series. Uh, once you hit that Format Data Series, you're going to see an option, Series Options, and you want to click Secondary Axis, okay? So you click Secondary Axis, and you see it magically appears there on the right. So let's go ahead and close that, and also we definitely want it to be more aesthetically pleasing, so let's do that. And we can blow it up. Again, we want to label it right away. I'm not going to label it just for time's sake, but make sure that you label it uh, along with your axes. So since we clicked VE, v, uh, VEVO2 and added the axis, the right axis is the one that corresponds to VEVO2. The left one corresponds to VEVCO2. All right, now what we're gonna do is put that uh, relationship or that graph off to the side here because we need to make our second graph. So let's go back. So we have our first one, VEVO2 uh, and VEVCO2. Now we want PETO2 and PETCO2 on one graph. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to here and we're gonna do PETO2 and PETCO2 and we're gonna make that in relation to VO2 again and go to insert scatter you can select the first one there and there we have it PET O2 and PET CO2 we'll fix it up a bit and we're also going to create the um, second y-axis for this one too so we'll do it for PET CO2 let's right click and we're gonna go to format data series and secondary axis we'll close that now we have our two axes really nice looking but what i don't like about this is that it starts at zero because 
Uh, we don't get any values up uh, about until 90, 85 or so. So let's go ahead and select this. And we're going to go to Format Axis. And we're going to do a fixed minimum. And it looks like it's 90, so let's try it. I'm going to put 90, close that, and that looks much better. Um, here we're going to do a fixed minimum as well.